Hello, everybody. Dan Mitzi Harris here with Jeremy Elder. Um, looking at one of my favorite Figma plugins called Visual Difference. Um, so Visual Difference allows you to see when pixel pixels have changed on a on a Figma file, similar similar to how we have Story Shot, I think it is in GitLab UI that when, when we make a change, um, things that aren't easy to see with the eye, computers are really, really good at seeing because they see in pixels. Um, so I'll just give a quick demo of how it works. So start up the plugin, select some frames and add two snapshots. Um, so these two snapshots create a baseline um, that it can compare against. Uh, so we can see my component by here and this frame down here. So in its most basic, if I make a change, so let's change the fill color, for example, to red. Rerun the, rerun the plugin. Um, no changes here, but it's picked up that I've got a red circle. Difference detected. Um, nice pink by here, nice red by there. But that's quite an easy change to see. So what about, oh, let's not undo like that. What if the change was a little bit harder and more suitable for a machine? I think it was E5s. Uh, no, D9s. And let's shift it two pixels or four pixels to the right uh, by I. I think even my eagle eyes wouldn't be able to spot this one. Um, but let's see if the machines know. Yep, we can see it's detected there's a difference between the original and this. But that's not super useful. Um, so to work out exactly what's changed, you click in like this, and you can change the overlay. And can you see the pink border there? Sometimes even this is quite hard um, to see. So I switch to party mode. Um, I mean, it's really small changes. That's that's how I can uh, see it. If you're happy with the changes, you just hit approve, and it becomes the new baseline. So you lose the original. So let's approve those changes. I like them. Uh, but this is super useful for when you change components, which you can see what's going on and the changes happen in a different frame. So let's say I change the letter spacing 1%. Um, I know it's changed here because I've been in it, but I might not have seen the effect. Let's change the line height as well to have it a real world impact. So I changed my line height to 18, but I'm busy up in here and I didn't notice this shifted this auto layout down. I can um, compare all again. Uh, the detected the difference here, which is cool, is a difference that I made and it's deliberate. So I can safely say, um, yeah, I approved that change. But this change I might not have noticed, which is the shift where these have moved, moved down um, ever so slightly, which I, I don't think I would have seen um, by I. Uh, do you have, have any questions or thoughts about that? Not at the moment. Uh, nice. Yeah, I think that's uh, a lot. Well, well, maybe one one quick thought is that if you are, uh, like in some instances that you've done before, well, you'll run the test for me and then say, oh, here's the results. You would not approve the change. You would want that left so that I could actually see that regression. Uh, so th there is a difference of when you would approve it, maybe in your own workflow. But if you're kicking it over for review on a final change, you would not necessarily want to approve that change before uh, having somebody else detect that. Exactly. Um, that's really a really good point. Um, I think the there might be some instances where you make half a change um, 
that you think isn't going to be um, painful, for want of a better word, and then prove that so it just highlights the 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 other stuff. Um, or if you're, if say I did the the text width or the letter spacing, and then wanted to check the impact of the line height, if I approved in between, it would allow me to see what each of those separate changes what effect that was having in a two-step but i think i think that's a much rarer use case but yeah like you said i found it useful for myself when i'm doing work to make sure i'm not affecting things negatively elsewhere and when it is happening and we're okay with it makes it hopefully easier for other reviewers to see where the changes are okay uh and then my other comment because we had discussed this prior to recording is that unlike a, uh, a a git workflow where you would compare changes to the main branch these are comparing changes within a branch so uh something you did at the start was you ran the plugin at the start which is critical because you're ch you're checking the changes in the branch to what a you know to its starting point so it's kind of like your, you know, your diff within that, but it's not going to compare what is in uh, the main. So that, that I just wanted to to state that because I that wasn't clear to me initially. I was thinking, well, is this going to, you know, detect changes against the main or against what I've changed in the branch, and it's specific to that branch or that file. So, um, um, yeah, I've I've got a theory though. And we're going to find out in real time if it works. Um, and I, I promise you, I haven't tested this before, but I've got a feeling it just looks at the frame names and the plugins just looking for an all snapshots auto layout. So I've made some changes to this label in a branch um, and I've decided, oh, I don't want to undo my work, but I want to see what visual impact this has. So my theory is, if I go to um, make a, a brand new branch. Okay. A, little, a little copy and paste trick, right? A little copy and paste trick, exactly. So I make, I make a uh, branch. I see where you're going. I go to, uh, go to labels and I generate that new baseline. My hope is I just dump it in the plugins none the wiser. And goes, oh yeah, I've I've been here before. I've done my done my thing. Um, so this this is my <laughs> if it if it works, I will be very very happy. So let's see if visual difference. Cool. So it's it's identified that it's it thinks that it's running here before, which is super nice. Now let's see if it can spot the differences nice uh see so again by eye i'd probably spot the underline but i don't know if i'd be able to see what else has changed so let's have a have a close look instances party mode and i can see the size of all of them has shifted slightly as well and if I was a reviewer or I was working on this branch and that was a change I hadn't expected, I'd have caught that and I'd be able to fix it and have a new baseline to compare against to line them back up. That's great. And and to be clear too, this is purely visual regression, right? This is not gonna tell me that layer order has changed, that I've changed my, uh, my um, auto layout settings, all of those things would still be done in a branch review with the Figma UI. This is purely for visual regression testing. Yeah, it's it's a piece of a larger testing and quality puzzle. Um, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure even if all of the pieces exist, but I think it's a valuable piece. Yeah, definitely agree. I guess that's the end of the recording. <laughs> that's it. For 1995, you too can have the visual difference plugin. Uh, 
So make your checks and payments payable to to Dan. Uh, no, it's um Nathan. It's free. It's done by Nathan. Oh, I can't remember their surname. Curtis. He, Is it Curtis? Eight shapes. Yeah. Who, yeah. So Nathan Curtis. Who I think yep. write write the best, like real practical. How do you actually do the stuff for design systems that I think I've Great. ever read? Yep, I think that's fantastic. And I think I've got that right, Nathan Curtis, on that. Uh, yes, and so with this, I, I think that, uh, you know, something that highlighted just as you becoming a Figma maintainer was your testing skills and capabilities. And so I thank you for demonstrating this. I think I'm going to use it when I update the type styles, uh, but also being able to distribute or set up plugins that are globally available to the organization account. I think that I'm going to move to add this so that it is available because uh, I could see this being uh, very valuable in uh, in even just stage work where you are wanting to update a feature or you know shift layouts. You're going to be able to even even if it's not micro changes, even in larger changes, have an artifact that is going to be more representative of those before and after states than you might otherwise. Um, I, I was wondering if to test one more thing here, uh, and that is the snapshots nesting. Given the new sections feature in Figma, we've discussed having a test section for components or when we're doing any kind of changes. Uh, if you nest these snapshot deals in a section, does it still work as expected? I have absolutely no idea. So let's find out. Uh, and, and the reason I asked that too is because we might also want to, um, it, it might not just be these, these tests that we run. We might want to manually highlight some other changes we've done and place them in this testing section. Or, you know, if, uh, if you're doing some stress testing on a component, th there's actually a new plugin out that, that actually builds out like all of your combinations for you and stress tests, mm -hmm, uh, stress mm -hmm. tests, different things. We might want to, you know, run some results of that and place them in a section that is just like a testing section. Uh, and so I, I think that there could be some value in that. And I just wanted to make sure that the plugin works as expected there. Sure. So I've created a section. My normal workflow is just select like this. And it's picked it up as one item, which knowing the little that I know about what sections are under the hood, it's not super surprising. Um, so we've got a baseline, that's the whole thing. Uh, but probably not as useful um, for the workflows that I'm and, thinking of it. Yeah, and what I'm thinking of is, is actually not a section to begin with, but a section where your snapshots sit in as a result. So you would, you would, probably generate your visual differences, place them mm -hmm. in a section, and then uh, move them out of that, if that makes sense. Nice. Um, we'll do we'll do all of that. So thankfully, I can select inside. It identifies it as two separate things. I can create my snapshots. Um, the compares look like they work as expected. And then I think what you were describing was put in this into a section and see if it still exactly. see if it still recognizes it no um it's it's not it must be looking f i wonder if i change this to all snapshots if it if it's doing something like that no so it's it isn't it isn't yet ready for sections for testing it okay, looks, cool. Oh, glad that, well, maybe yeah. maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I was too quick. Maybe I jumped the gun. I think I made a mistake. And let me just make a change arbitrarily. Fix width one, two, three. Uh, no, it's yes, yeah, it doesn't. It's not. It's not seeing it anymore. Um, let's check. 
No. That's... And then come, yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I unsection this, it, yeah, it loses, it loses visibility of them. And then I unsection them and they're back. Okay, so not ready for adding to a section, like a testing section yet. So it's just critical in the meantime, or maybe helpful that we identify those sections with something outside of it initially if if we need to or um to group those so that we can kind of group all our testing but yeah we'll watch for that and see if there's an update on that nice and now we end the recording <laughs> I <got some> button. <laughs>